Hey guys, welcome back. So I haven't done one of these videos in a while and I almost didn't make it, but after I started researching, it became very clear that what I'm about to share with you is a pattern with this company and not a one-time deal or a coincidence. In my opinion, if you have a hunch about something or feel as though a situation could be a coincidence, I think it's important to look at the history of the company in this instance to determine whether or not to give weight to the situation in question. This is why integrity in business is important and although every company's main objective is to make money, I don't believe it should be done by participating in unethical business practices such as taking advantage of customers. So in this video, we're going to explore Becca Cosmetics and their love for recycling and reusing their highlight slash blush and eyeshadow shades by repackaging and renaming them to make them look like brand new items. So let's jump right in. Okay, so as I said at the outset, I initially didn't know whether or not I was going to go through with this video, but I did some preliminary research and it started to become clear that my suspicion was unlikely to be be an isolated incident, fluke, or coincidence, and this instance is one of many instances where Becca's integrity is called into question. So what led me to this investigation was the release of the Becca and Chrissy Teigen Glow Face Palette collaboration. As soon as this collab was announced and the picture of the palette was released, I immediately flashed back to the June 2016 launch of the Becca and Jaclyn Hill Champagne Face Palette collab. Now although the Chrissy palette is smaller, containing two highlighters, one blush, and one bronzer for a total of four shades to Jaclyn's five pan palette, which included two highlighters and three blushes, there are, in my opinion, too many similarities between the two collabs to be considered a coincidence. From the packaging to the shades being a very close match to each other, down to the similarities in the details from both collab launch parties, all of which makes me wonder if Becca uses a cookie cutter when collabing with influencers or celebrities, and whether any of the shades used in these collabs are in fact unique and not recycled from previous collections. I decided to look into this, and I was really surprised with the results of my research. So let's start with the Jaclyn Hill and Chrissy Teigen collabs. Now just looking at them without even swatching, they are extremely similar in design. Both palettes outer packaging uses a rubbery material on the front side and a metal like material on the bottom, which is continued on the inside surrounding the pans. As for the shades themselves, and this is totally up to interpretation, but I think they look very close in the pans, which I know can be deceiving to what the shades look like swatched. And I will admit that initially when the Chrissy palette was revealed, my first thought was, oh my god, it looks so similar to Jaclyn's, but I thought, no, they wouldn't do that with someone like Chrissy, because you know she's a pretty big celebrity, and although they would have to be conscious of the price of the palette so that it appeals to consumers, they wouldn't have to be as price conscious as they would be when collabing with a YouTuber slash influencer, so being that the two palettes are literally $5 apart, Jaclyn's being at the higher price point for an extra shade, I would definitely expect the shades in Chrissy's palette to be unique and unlike anything they've done in the past, however, that does not appear to be the case as you can see in this next picture. So in the top two pictures, we have two examples of swatches taken from different sites of the Jaclyn Hill palette, and on the bottom we have two versions of swatches from Trend Mood of the Chrissy palette. Now when I compared these pictures, I noticed that three of the shades from the Chrissy palette looked more than just a little similar to three of the shades in the Jaclyn palette. And the remaining shade from the Chrissy palette, I believe, could be created by mixing two from the Jaclyn palette, so I lined them up for you to make it easier to compare. So in this picture, you can see the Chrissy palette on top lined up with the Jaclyn palette on the bottom, so we we have Jaclyn's Rose Spritz and Chrissy's Rose Gold, which by the way was originally one of Becca's so-called limited edition highlighters, which was originally released in 2013 using a prismatic embossed print on the pan which seems to be consistent with their limited edition items, but then in 2015 the shade Rose Gold became part of Becca's permanent collection and the embossed texture was changed to match their permanent lineup. In addition to becoming part of Becca's permanent collection in 2015, the shade Rose Gold was also used in their limited edition Afterglow palette. That same year, which by the way, is still available to this day. So here we are in 2017, and what started as a limited edition item has once again been used in the Chrissy collab. This one shade has bounced around from palette to palette and accrued more mileage than the Town Ho at this point. Another similarity I noticed between the Jaclyn and Chrissy collabs was their launch parties. Now I know their themes were different, but watching them both on Snap felt like some of the decor from Jaclyn's collab launch was copied, only using the baking theme for Chrissy's. I also don't really understand the link between Chrissy's collab and a baking theme. I know Chrissy is a foodie, but the palette itself had nothing to do with baking. The shades aren't named after baked goods or anything, I don't know, but it seemed odd for Becca to take promo shots of Chrissy baking and really play up the baking theme, yet the palette didn't really have any reference to baked goods, with the shade names being very summery slash glow inspired, I just didn't see how the two were related. Adding to that, I'm a huge Chrissy fan, I watch her snaps all the time and the girl can cook like no one's business, but 
cooking and baking are two very different things and I'm almost sure she has said in the past that baking really isn't her thing. But anyway, back to the rest of the shade similarities. So we have Rose Spritz and Rose Gold, which I think are very close, and then we have Amaretto from Jacqueline's palette and Malibu Soleil from Chrissy's. And yes, I do realize that Malibu Soleil is branded as a bronzer, but when it comes to makeup, it doesn't matter what a company brands a product as. I've used bronzers and highlighters for eyeshadows and eyeshadow as highlighter and liquid lipstick for eyeliner, so to me, makeup is interchangeable, and regardless of the fact that Becca labeled Malibu Soleil as a bronzer, it is very similar, maybe just a touch warmer than Amaretto. Also, if Malibu Soleil was intended to be a bronzer, why the fuck is it so damn small? I actually hate when companies make face powders and bronzers too small to use a big fluffy brush with because you can't distribute the product evenly on the brush because the brush is too big for the pan. But anyway, moving on to the shade Pomplamousse from Jaclyn's palette and Hibiscus Bloom from Chrissy's. Are we seeing a trend here? Because these two look almost identical to me. And it appears that others are catching on to the similarities between the two palettes because as I was wrapping up editing this video, I noticed a post from Hot Fire Makeup on Twitter comparing Pomplamousse, Hibiscus Bloom, and Snapdragon, which is a blush from Becca's permanent collection. And I don't know about you, but to me, all three shades look almost identical. What's interesting is that Snapdragon was originally released in April 2016 and two months later in June 2016, Jaclyn's Champagne Face Palette was released containing Pomplamousse, so I assume there was some overlap in production between the palette and the single, and it doesn't make sense to me that they would spend money to create two separate shades that look almost identical. So it's either the same shade renamed or it's the same shade made in different formulas, one using higher quality ingredients, which obviously would have been for Snapdragon, being that it is part of their permanent collection and lower slash cheaper ingredients for Pomplamousse since they'd have to be more price conscious being that it would be included in a collab. Also, when you use different ingredients to create the same shade, the shade will have subtle differences due to the quality of the ingredients used. They could have also used the same shade and thrown in a little shimmer to change the texture slightly, but in my opinion, these shades were made from the exact same base and they are not different enough to be considered two different shades. But it doesn't stop there because 11 months after the Jaclyn palette was released, we have another palette using an almost identical shade to Pomplamousse and Snapdragon, and that shade is Hibiscus Bloom from the Chrissy palette. As you can see all three are just too similar to be entirely different shades. In my opinion, all three shades are the same with minor quality and texture tweaks and they have basically recycled the same damn shade under different names over and over again. As for Beach Nectar and the Chrissy palette, that may be the only truly original shade in the palette, but I feel like if you own the Jaclyn palette, you could totally mix Amaretto and Rose Spritz or Amaretto and Champagne Pop to create something close. And unless you like to collect palettes or collabs or are just a makeup lover in general, I think that if you already own the Jaclyn palette, it's redundant to buy the Chrissy palette, being that you are truly just buying one brand new shade, which isn't anything groundbreaking anyway, but that's just my opinion. I mean, why not spend your money on makeup that hasn't been recycled, reduced, and reused, right? Here's something else I found interesting to say the least. Good old Trend Mood posted swatches of the Chrissy and Jaclyn palettes, yet she conveniently left out a swatch of Rose Spritz from Jaclyn's palette and instead swatched both highlighters when no one was questioning the fact that the highlighter shades were similar to any of the shades in Chrissy's palette. Like, Trend Mood, if you're gonna compare, please use the shades in question. My conspiracy is that Trend Mood knows very well that the palettes are a close match, but she's good friends with the creative director of Becca, so for once she shut her mouth. But if I still haven't convinced you that Becca as a company is shady, let's take a closer look at some of their past scandals. Where do we even begin here? Okay, I'm just gonna lay everything out for you, so let's start with Champagne Pop and listen. I'm not even surprised anymore when limited edition items make their way back over and over again and then eventually become permanent, but Becca takes it to a level where they just squeeze every last dime out of a product by creating different facades for it to fool customers into thinking they're buying a different product. So as we know, the Becca and Jaclyn Hill Shimmering Skin Perfector in Champagne Pop originally started out as a limited edition product in July 2015. But by January 2016, it was added to Becca's permanent collection and you know how it goes, it's all because we asked for it. But shortly before Champagne Pop became permanent in November 2015, Becca and Jaclyn Hill collabed again on the limited edition Champagne Glow palette, which contained three limited edition highlight shades, one of which was Champagne Pop. As I said earlier, Champagne Pop was made permanent almost exactly two months after this palette was released. So it was the Champagne Glow Palette 
one last attempt to squeeze sales from Champagne Pop under the limited edition facade before announcing that the shade would be permanent, cause that's exactly what it looks like to me, but let's talk about the other two supposed limited edition shades included in the Champagne Glow palette. So aside from Champagne Pop, we have Blushed Copper, which Becca originally released as a limited edition pressed shimmering skin perfector in March 2015, using their limited edition packaging with the embossed prismatic print on the pan. Then it was used again in November 2015 as part of the aforementioned Becca and Jaclyn Hill Glow palette, again labeled as a limited edition shade. Then five months later in April 2016, Blush Copper was released not as a shimmering skin perfector, but rebranded as a luminous blush, which of course is now permanent. So remember earlier when I was talking about Amaretto in the Jaclyn palette and Malibu Soleil from the Chrissy palette? Well, this is exactly what I was talking about. Now for the last shade in the palette called Pearl, it made the quickest transition from limited to permanent as the Champagne Glow palette was released in November 2015, and the shade was made permanent in December 2015. So to me, it is very clear that all this limited to permanent BS is planned months in advance and the label limited edition is only used as a sales tactic to sell more of the same shit in different packaging. But let's go back and talk about the Becca and Jaclyn Hill Champagne Face Palette. So as I said, this palette was released in June 2016 and of course promised by both Jaclyn and Becca to be limited edition. In fact, in this picture, a fan directly tweets at Jaclyn Hill, once it's sold out, it's gone for good, to which Jaclyn responds with, yes, that's correct. But after the results of a ridiculous Twitter poll conducted by Becca asking whether people wanted the palette to return back one last time, were overwhelmingly positive, you guessed it, the palette was brought back in November 2016. So either Becca borrowed Santa's elves and produced the palettes in five days, or the whole thing had been planned well in advance and the Twitter poll was a ridiculous attempt to conceal their lies and make it seem like the second release hinged on a fucking Twitter poll. Yeah, I'm gonna go with option B because once again, I was born a day, but today is not that day. And when Jaclyn faced backlash from fans who bought the palette on its first round, she basically placed the blame on Becca by saying she had no control over the decision and that she's not the boss. It's just so odd that whenever she gets caught in lies that she creates herself, she claims ignorance or places the blame on the other side. In my opinion, if you're gonna collab with companies, you should be prepared to face backlash like this whether or not you knew about it, especially when you have 4 million subscribers. I do not believe that Jacqueline got to the level of success she's at right now by being a moron. She is a businesswoman and I don't believe for one second that she has been fucked over so many times and kept in the dark when it comes to her business. But before the champagne face palette was brought back in November 2016 and just one month after its original launch, Becca and Jacqueline announced in July 2016 that they were adding to the champagne collection and introduced champagne splits, which was a duo containing blush in one side and a highlighter in the other. This too caused a shitload of backlash because once again, Consumers were under the impression that some of the shades used in the face palette were exclusive to the face palette. But one month later, these limited edition splits come out using a blend of shades from the face palette with some of Becca's permanent line and fans were pissed because being that only one month had lapsed between the two launches, you know both items were in production at the exact same time so there is no denying that both Becca and Jacqueline knew that the shades were not exclusive to the face palette and that this launch of the splits was planned well in advance and by the way, those limited edition champagne splits are still available to this day. Okay you guys, we haven't even scratched the surface of Becca's shade recycling and questionable business practices, but as some of you know I've been experiencing issues with my computer and uploading so I figured I'd break it down until everything is fixed and have the second part up tomorrow for you, so I do apologize for that, but in the meantime let me know if you guys knew about all this recycling, reusing, and repackaging of shades and how you feel about it, and keep in mind that there is still so much more to get to, but for me I was very turned off of Becca after the whole Jaclyn Hill eyeshadow palette scandal even though I do like some of their products but after putting all of this together I don't like the fact that they think that they can pull this shit off but please let me know your thoughts below thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for part two tomorrow bye